Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see what is Groovy and how is it different from Java and Kotlin and other JVM languages, right? So recently, if you know, Groovy has been moved into the Apache ecosystem. So that's why if you see the um, website is now named as Apache Groovy. So you see that here. So previously it was under uh, Codehost. Now it is moved to Apache. Okay. So let's see how Groovy is different from other uh, JVM languages. Uh, the Groovy website says that it is powerful, optionally typed dynamic language. So if you hear about dynamic language, it is similar to JavaScript. So you know that in JavaScript, um, you won't face issues at compile time, but you face issues at runtime. So if you, in a way, Groovy is something similar. So you won't uh, be able to completely make a sense of everything at compile time because uh, it is a dynamic language and it works on the concepts of uh, reflection. So it does the reflection with Java. So imagine Java working with uh, reflections, right? So how uh, tedious is that? So Groovy works in uh, in the way of reflection, and it was created before uh, before even Kotlin was born, right? Okay. The other thing is uh, it is static typed and static compile. It has static type and uh, static compilation phys um, compilation capabilities for the Java platform aimed at improving developer productivity. Thanks to the concise, familiar and easy learn syntax. Yeah, so the syntax is exactly same as Java and it looks similar to Python a little bit. But if you don't know how to write something in Groovy, you can obviously you can write whatever you know in Java. So it supports um, whatever you write in Java as well. So that's a good thing about learning Groovy. So if you are uh, learning Groovy, you already know Groovy. So if you already know Java, you know, you know Groovy almost because you can use whatever you um, use in Java inside a Groovy script. Just that you need to know a little bit of uh, preliminary stuff before starting the Groovy coding, right? So that's what we are going to learn in this particular video. Okay. Uh, another thing, uh, the other good thing about Groovy is Groovy uh, had the closures and lambda expression before even the Java uh, 8 world. So before even functional programming was introduced inside Java, so the lambdas and stuff came into Java 8. So Groovy um, created that beforehand. So even with uh, Java 6 and Java 7, we were able to create Lambda expressions and closures from Groovy. So you can write a Java um, code inside Groovy, which was using Lambdas and closures, even though it was running in a Java 6 and Java 7 uh, virtual machines. Okay. So let's go and get started. Right. So that's what we wanted to see. What uh, how does uh, Groovy feel like? Right. So I'm going to create a small uh, project. With, uh, which is going to be a Groovy project and I'm going to show you uh, what and all you can do with Groovy. So I'm going to say Groovy. Uh, it's asking me for the Groovy library. So uh, meanwhile, I'll just do a, let's create the program. let it open so if it is still not able to recognize groovy so we will have to download the groovy library and then include that library here okay so we have the project ready so let's go and create a simple groovy script right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a simple groovy class okay before that let's uh, make this project it's nothing actually nothing is there in this project it's not even a maven project so uh, let's see if it works right so create a, did we create a new java class i'm going to create a new groovy class so in order to do that i'll just create a class saying test.groovy okay so yeah it looks like the groovy sdk is not set up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly download the groovy sdk right so from uh, where do we know so there is a download option here so you can download the Groovy um, library. So I'm going to download the SDK here. Okay. So I have 2.4.12, which has got distributed. So I'm just going to download that SDK. So I'm just saving it. Okay. Meanwhile, if you have uh, 
you can also install from the command line if you are using a command line Groovy interface but uh, since I'm going to use IntelliJ uh, IntelliJ needs the Groovy library so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the uh, the uh, SDK for the Groovy um, to kick the, kick start the Groovy um, classes okay so uh, where, where, where will we be using Groovy if you frankly ask me I had been Groovy use uh, I had been using Groovy for the past uh, four to five years now so we used to use um, test cases in Groovy. So we write tests in Groovy. So we have Java classes which are in the which are the source code, and then for the tests we write them in Groovy because uh, it saves lots of time. So if you are um, considering writing a Java test, which is like uh, more than 200 lines of code in Groovy, you can write it in 50 lines or maybe even less uh, with less lines of code. So that is why we started using Groovy. And now if you see the latest. Uh, uh, frameworks and stuff which are coming up for example pipeline as a code so the Jenkins pipeline it, it's all uh, using Groovy DSL okay so DSL is nothing but domain specific language so Jenkins is using a custom uh, DSL uh, for uh, creating the pipeline so you can create your own DSLs for uh, creating a pipeline okay so you can use that from Groovy so Groovy has this uh, concept of DSL same way if you see Gradle Gradle uh, is almost arrived from the Groovy DSL Okay, so if you are familiar with Gradle, which is uh, equivalent to Maven in our uh, Java world, right, for packaging the jars and wars and stuff like that. So Gradle is something similar, but um, it is more powerful and uh, it is written in the Groovy DSL. So it's much, um, you can you can use it with uh, much of your ease. You don't have to learn uh, the XML format like how we do in Maven. So that is why it, uh, it is called DSL, so domain specific language and it is user friendly as well. So same way Groovy is as well. So that's what we are going to see now. So yeah, the SDK is downloaded now. So I'm going to unzip it. So let me quickly go and unzip it. Okay, it's unzipped now. Let me go to IntelliJ and now let's configure the library, right? I think that's what it was asking, but I know. Yeah. So I'm going to say Groovy. Okay, I'm going to use the library 2.4.12. So that's what we did, right? So we downloaded the 2.4.12 library. I just unzipped it and I have just uh, given the library for IntelliJ to set up the SDK so like how we had set up the uh, Java SDK we need to set up a Groovy SDK as well because uh, that is the main code which is going to convert the Java uh, the Groovy code into the byte codes so basically uh, Groovy how it works is you create a Groovy class so that class is going to get converted into a byte code ultimately like how Java gets converted into byte code so Groovy is also getting uh, we need to convert that also in the byte code so Groovy is going to do that uh, in case of a project like how I was mentioning right so we were using both Java and Groovy in the same project there you can use a Groovy compiler plugin uh, to compile uh, the Groovy classes along with the Java package so you can use that in conjugation with Java okay so let's go ahead and get started so I'm going to uh, start writing some uh, Groovy code so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can write uh, different types of uh, code in Groovy like whatever we do in Java Right. So in Java, what do we do? We write a public static void main to print a hello world, right? So in Groovy, you don't have to do that. You just say print ln and you just say hello world. So this is going to print hello world for you. Right? Because the Groovy is going to convert this particular text into a class. So Groovy knows that, okay, there is no class defined here and it will wrap automatically this particular line of code into a class and inside a public static void main and this is going to get executed out of the box okay and since groovy does uh, everything by reflection so it is a little bit slower than java because uh, it is going to do all the reflections and it is going to scan all the libraries if you had too many jars it's going to scan everything so it is not recommended to use uh, production code uh, with groovy but you can write uh, test code or you you can write some uh, some other stuff in Groovy but there are uh, many people who use Groovy um, in production as well but you know the pain of using JavaScript right in production right it's a dynamic language so you will have the same pain in Groovy as well so if you notice here the hello world got printed we just didn't uh, mention anything we just didn't mention class 
we just didn't mention public static void main but still you can do that as well so groovy is not going to complain um, about anything right so you can say public static void main and i'm just going to move i'm just going to move this particular piece of code into the functions here so this is also going to give the same result so this is the java traditional way right but you can use this way as well but you can use in the groovy groovy way as well so if you notice here uh, intellij is suggesting me that there is no need of public because everything inside groovy is public so because it works on the principle of reflection so it is going to expose any everything right so that's why we don't need to declare anything as public right so that that also works okay so this is how you create a normal um, groovy class okay so let's go ahead and now see how to create variables and stuff so you can do def okay so you can do def and then assign uh, let's say what is it name so you can assign a name like the famous and then you can just print it this works so you can do this as well so in java what we would have done is we would have done this way right we would have done like tech primers so i think it uh, recognizes the string as well so and if you notice here it did not give any compile time error because it doesn't know that at compile time okay if you notice here both these are same and if i have to do a integer okay we say some version number right i say version equal to 1 right here i can say still version equal to 1 so i don't have to define any different data type so i can use the same data type called def right so that is a major difference so you don't have to type uh, what is, whether it is a string or a uh, integer or anything else so that's why i said it is similar to javascript because in javascript also you use a similar kind of format right you use var instead of def okay and if you notice the major difference between java and here is there is no semicolon you don't have to mention semicolon so the semicolon is gone away okay so let's remove this so now that we saw what is def so how do we define methods right so we can define methods in the same way you can say public static but public you don't have to mention because it's groovy so you can mention uh, let's say i'm going to create a traditional java a test class right I'm going to show you how to write method. So I don't have to do this. So let's say I'm going to create a method called uh, start, right? See, I'm starting to write semicolon because I'm used to Java. Right? So you don't have to do that. So in order to create a method, you can create this way because you are calling from a static method. It is asking you to create static, but if you don't want, you can just say def, and you say new test. and then say start okay this is going to call the start method as well so you don't have to define whether it is a void or a string or something you can define it as def so that will automatically convert it into a void or any any return type if you are returning string it will work if you are returning an integer it will work so this is going to automatically type cast into any data type which you are going to return so i'm going to say let's say i'm going to return uh, one here right and i'm going to print this this is going to print one because this is going to return def here okay in fact you don't even have to say return as well so if i just say one this is going to return one as well if i run this again so this is also going to return one if you notice here it has returned one because the last statement doesn't require return so because it is by default going to return something you can define whatever you want to return so you don't even have to type return so you see the number of lines of uh, code which we are writing right it's getting reduced right okay the next thing is um, let's create a pojo right that that's the fun so let's create a pojo so i'm just going to call it as a pojo itself okay and i have a variable called uh, name which is going to be a string okay and i have an variable called id which is going to be an integer so how do we access inside java so inside java you you write a getter and a setter right 
So you write a getter and a setter and then we access it. But in Groovy, you can do this. So we say Pojo. I'm going to say static. You say Pojo. Okay. And you can assign variables like this. ID. So if you notice your IntelliJ is automatically suggesting ID is going to be integer so it, you can do this and you can just assign this to a variable and then you can just print it. We see here how we can how we are defining the Pojo. So if you notice here you haven't done anything here. So you haven't created any constructor, you haven't created a getter or a setter, still you are able to create it like this. So how do you assign variables right? So from the Pojo you can assign it like this. You just say pojo dot whatever objects we created you can just directly uh, access the name if you notice here the name inside the pojo is a private but still we are able to access it here so that is what groovy does it's all reflection i as i mentioned right it's all reflection so you can use anything so there is no privacy inside groovy so that is why i uh, warned you saying that don't use this kind of code in production but uh, it helps you in uh, writing less number of code so you can use it for writing tests so that's what we used to do so that is one thing which is there so you can directly assign like this you can assign um, like this okay so that is what groovy does so you don't have to worry about assigning so uh, let me print a pojo right so we saw how to call a star function so we saw how to call a function so let me do a two string here right so i'll do a two string so that we see what is the new values which got printed okay if you see here the new value got changed even though we created a po uh, youtube here so let me do a print there as well right And if you notice here, this did not fail. The compilation did not fail, but it fails only at the runtime, right? That is why I was telling it is dangerous. It's a dynamic language, so you will not know where, where the code is going to break. So whether it is going to break in production or your during your compile time. Okay, so if you notice here, this has got changed. Same way, if you are accessing it, you can use the same thing. So you can say pojo dot name and access it. And if you notice here, this print I am just not doing this. I'm not doing this in fact you can do this so you have a space and then you this is treated as an argument to the particular method so this is a method right println is a method println is nothing but system dot out dot printer okay that's the same thing so println is a method and you are passing this as an argument if you have two arguments you can do comma separated you can do like that okay for any function it's not only for the println function for any function right so you can do that so that is another way of uh, calling functions or defining functions in groovy right the next thing is uh, creating lists right so lists are uh, very simple so you create an empty list like this that's it so this is an empty list so in java what do we do we say a list a new array list of something something blah 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 right so you can do something like this and if you want to convert this into a linked list or something else you can just say as linked list or linked whatever you need linked hash set if you need a hash set you can just say that so if you just uh, say as and then give the specific data type it gets converted into that particular data type and if you want to add them you just say add and then uh, let's say i'm going to add strings right i'm going to say string one so i can add this way okay and how do I iterate it now, right? So you can print it this way, but how do I iterate it? Right? So there is a much easier way. So it is going to use something called closure, okay, which is new for us in the JVM language. So closure is like passing a function to a another function. So in, if you are uh, from the JavaScript world, you would have known function within a function. So you pass a function to another function as an argument, right? So that is called closure. So in, in uh, Groovy, it's called closure. There is a language called closure as well 
so that is closure C L O J U R E but this is closure so what we are going to do here is we are going to use closure so how do we use closure is this way you have to use the open brace and close brace in Groovy in order to pass a closure so this is not a closure this is passing an argument you have a value and you are passing it if you want a function or something you can do this if you want to pass more than uh, two three lines you can pass it like this so this is like passing something else so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say print ln and I'm going to print it so I'll tell you about it right so what we are doing here is we are iterating this list saying okay take each element from the list and that corresponds to a default object called it in Groovy okay inside a list right when you iterate it it corresponds to a default value called it if you want to have it as a specific value so you can do this as well so I'm saying um, ST, I can do this right str okay I'm saying that whatever value you take out from the list put it inside the variable called str and then you can use them here okay so you, you can write a number of lines of code here I mean Ah, I screwed up something. So let me restart. Rerun this. So you can write a number of lines of code here. Okay, it will still not complain. If you notice here, it has printed the value still. Right? So it also works and you can give it a name as well. So this is how you work with the lists. So you don't have to do a for each or you don't have to do a for int i equal to whatever. All those are not required in Groovy. Okay, this is how you work with list. Map is still more fun. So how do we define an empty map? Is this funky, right? So you have a semicolon here which defines there is no key, there is no value. So it's an empty map. So key will be in the left side and the value will be in the left side. So if you want to um, have some uh, values in the map, you can do this. You can say name colon and then you can say YouTube, right? So this is going to have a hash map with one key value pair and the key is uh, going to be name and the value is going to be YouTube so if I just do a print let's see what's going to happen if you see here it's just printing the same thing which is nothing but a key value pair now we need to iterate this right like how we iterate the list we need to iterate this so don't worry there is a each for this as well so it is going to expect the same closure the only thing is here we will have key and value both right so in the list we had only one uh, object so we had only one object so here what we can do is we can do key comma value and say that we can use them both the so I'm going to say key and value I'm going to print all the keys and value so if I say I'm going to add a few more objects right so I'm going to add id as a, let's say one two three salary okay so this is also get, going to get printed so in map you can do key comma value and then those can be used as key and value so this key and value corresponds to the key and value inside the hash map okay if you see here everything got printed the key got printed the value got printed the key got printed the value got printed okay so now uh, when we used to print inside the print a log statement or something we used to use the string dot format right so you don't have to use string dot format instead you can use double quotes inside groovy so single quote is uh, used for representing a string which you which is going to be immutable if you want to change something or parse something inside a, a string object then you use double quotes so i'm going to say key equal to and then i'm going to say dollar key so which basically means dollar represents that I need to use a variable which is already defined if I just say key equal to it is going to print the same key equal to but if I say dollar key it is going to take the variable which is declared outside even though if it is inside double quotes it is going to take me to the value which is there outside if you see here the key and the values are getting printed whatever the key and the keys name is getting printed okay same way for value we can do that so this is how you work out with the print alert. right? So same way if you have set you can just say has set uh, you can just say uh, as as a set and then you can work around like has a hash set and then it will behave like an hash set. So everything is uh, all reflection so if you see Groovy has their own methods 
so all the um, classes inside Java are all overridden by Groovy so they use the concept of reflection there are lots of good things about Groovy but um, we, we, we should be very careful in using that there are lots of um, concepts uh, concepts like hurrying and um, memoize and stuff like that which we can see in the next video but this is just uh, the basics of Groovy so how we can use Groovy and stuff like that so if you see here this is a closure so this is how we declare closure so you pass a you pass this whole thing into this particular method so each is a method which is um, overridden in this particular object okay the other fun part is um, groovy supports uh, operator overloading so uh, what do you mean by operator overloading right so i'll show you what is operator overloading so a equal to equal to b this particular expression is equivalent to a dot equals of b right in java this is not equal but in groovy this both these are equal okay so java we have uh, we have the concept of memory and then you say that okay if you cannot compare strings and since string is overridden string has equals and uh, two string overridden it does something and uh, hash code overridden it does all those all those uh, fundas right but in groovy both these are same because it supports operator overloading so why is it useful is if you are uh, doing a a plus b right this can be translated as a dot plus of b right so you that is called operator overloading so which basically means you can create an object called a and then say plus of b okay and the method inside uh, the method called plus inside a will be executed even though you did a, a plus b so i'm going to quickly show you that so let's create a class called uh, a right and let's say it's going to have some uh, variable called i and there is a method called plus and that is going to expect some some other variable right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a variable called a I'm gonna assign 10 okay now I'm gonna say a dot so I'm gonna create a another object okay I'm gonna create another object called B which is of same type a okay why is it not Cannot resolve uh, symbol A1. I don't know why it's could be. It should work. Let's see. Maybe this is because I haven't done A plus of P. Right. So this is uh, for simplicity. Make let's make it a capital A. It's getting confused, right? We're getting confused. Yeah. So this sounds fine. Right. So what we have done is we have created two objects, okay, of class A, and named it as A and B. So A and B are going to be two different objects. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying A dot plus of B, and I'm passing B here, right? So this is going to be an object of type A itself, right? In in general, what we do, we do like this, right? And then we say return uh, A dot I plus I. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add both of them, right? This dot i, for example. Right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say print ln. So in general, what is this going to return? This is going to return 10 plus 20, which is going to be 30, right? So in Groovy, you can do this in a different fashion as well. See, 30 came. Now I'm going to do a plus b. Okay. So this is also going to return 30. You have no clue how, right? So that is what we are going to see now. How does it do? So that is called operator overloading. So if you see here, that also has written 30. Okay. So that is called operator overloading. So literally this plus has got translated into a method called plus. 
that is why a equal to equal to b gets translated into equals method it gets translated into equals method and that is how it works so same way if you have a minus b you will you will have to write a method called a minus b and then you can just proceed with that so that is another way of um, writing stuffs in groovy so it's very simple right you don't have to say dot a dot plus of b you just say a plus b that's it it's going to call the method called plus so it is very useful when you are writing tests we used to use uh, dsls so um, you will have a, a bdd kind of style and then you can have uh, lots of stuff inside groovy so you can write uh, you just say a plus b and then you can literally concatenate two objects or concatenate two stuffs or if you say a equal to b you can compare stuff stuff like that you can do all those things in groovy so that is called operator overloading in groovy okay so that is another good thing which you can use uh, uh, when you are uh, writing tests or so writing the pipelines in uh, jenkins 5 okay so that is what i wanted to cover as a part of this particular video if you want me to cover any specific groovy concept do let me know i can cover that uh, but i just wanted to start off with a basic um, uh, concept of what is groovy and how does it work and i just wanted to show you a real flavor of how glo uh, groovy works and how you can make groovy work i even downloaded the library and i showed you how to set up set that up inside intellij okay so that's it for this particular video if you want me to um, do any specific topic do comment that in the um, comment section below if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much